Thanks again for being here, and uh, I want to thank again the folks that joined us for uh, dinner last evening at the Air Museum. I thought it was a, a wonderful event. I hope you felt the same way. But again, we know that you all have lots of places you need to be and things you need to do. We really appreciated you. Sp decided to spend a couple of days uh, getting to know Pratt Whitney a little bit better, getting to meet some of the members of the leadership team, and helping us uh, celebrate another important historic milestone for Pratt Whitney today. So again, thank you all for being here. Okay, just to kind of put Pratt in perspective of UTC, United Technologies Corporation is about a $56 billion corporation. You can see how it gets divided up between the commercial and industrial operations as well as the aerospace businesses. On the left, you can see uh, Otis Elevator and UTC Climate Controls and Security. Climate Controls and Security is, is made up of Carrier and what was formerly referred to as Foreign Security within UTC. On the right-hand side, you can see the three aerospace businesses that make up United Technologies, with Pratt Whitney representing about close to 25% of the revenues of United Technologies, and the largest of the three aerospace businesses. You can also see Sikorsky and Hamilton Sunstrand, and as you know, UTC is in the process of acquiring Goodrich now, which we would expect to close uh, either late, uh, sometime around mid this year, and that'll continue to grow the pie that you see here. Okay, this is, uh, this is Pratt Whitney, close to a $13 billion aerospace engine company that last year generated just under $2 billion in profits. Uh, this excludes uh, the Rocketdyne business, as you know, both that former chart that I just showed you for UTC, as well as this excludes the, uh, the three business units that have been dispositioned for uh, a sale recently. Pratt Whitney, Rocketdyne among them, the Clipper business, and also Hamilton Sunstrands industrial businesses. But what you see here on this slide, again, is perhaps close to $13 billion in annual revenues with our three core engine businesses. And you can see the relative size here, but our largest business continues to be our large commercial aerosp aerospace engine business that serves airlines and airframe manufacturers around the world. Our military engine business, we're number one in the world in military fighter engines. You can see the size of the military engine business there, and then Pratt Whitney Canada, our small engine business, number one in the world in small commercial engines, and Pratt Power Systems, our industrial gas turbine business that also has um, um, an organic rank and cycle uh, electric power generating business within it as well. Uh, this is a, a good business for us. It's generated the five successive years of of revenue and record of revenue and earnings growth. They have more than 2,000 industrial gas turbines installed around the world. And are, they're also in the process of generating their next generation product as well. I'll talk more about that. Uh, 2011, as, as Jay alluded to, was a pretty darn exciting year for, for Pratt Whitney. And soon following the official launch of the A320neo program, late in 2010, we, we uh, were very quick in capturing the first three launch orders for the A320neo program, Lufthansa, ILFC, and Indigo. Indigo being the largest Pratt Whitney, large commercial engine program order in 40 years for Pratt. Last time we had an order that big was actually on a, a 727 with JT-80 engine. So this was a, a big deal for us to capture the first three launch orders for that aircraft. And that in turn earned us the right to be the first engine certified on the A320neo program and will be the first engine in production on that program. We'll be in production on that program uh, well before LEAPX, uh, somewhere on the order of uh, 9 to 12 months prior to LEAPX uh, going in, into production on that aircraft. Uh, we also had an exciting year with uh, engines going to test. Uh, we finally got the C-series engine into the air for the first time on our flying test bed in around June of last year, and also the MRJ engine uh, started testing. You'll hear more about that. We also uh, had a good year on our military engine business. The, the taxpayer finally prevailed, and the, the DOD customer finally got what they wanted with the elimination of the extra engine for the Joint Strike Fighter program. So by virtue of that decision in Congress, we're now the sole source engine for the Joint Strike Fighter program. In fact, Pratt Whitney is the only military fighter engine company in the, in the world today that has two uh, fifth generation fighter engines, our engines on the F-22 and the Joint Strike Fighter now. And uh, we continue to move forward with the development of the PW-800 family of engines. This is uh, targeted at the, the large business jet segment. As you know, we're number one in the world in the small and medium-sized 
business jet segment, and we're using the core that we're developing for our large commercial programs, that's the core on the MRJ and C-Series engines, and applying it to the large business jet uh, family as well. So we have um, great expectations for success there in the future as well. And then we had a very big deal last year uh, with Rolls-Royce in acquiring their share of the IAE B2500 joint venture, and along with that, an agreement to collaboration on, collaborate on next generation narrowbody engines. So I'll talk more about all of those things. Okay, this is again the big news in the large commercial engine business for Pratt Whitney. We're in the process of developing the next generation product family of engines. This is a, a family of engines from about 10 to 40,000 pounds of thrust that share a common engine architecture uh, that is uh, certainly uh, designed around the geared engine architecture, as well as sharing a common suite of engine technologies. We've got four new applications in progress today. You can see here. Uh, the Bombardier C Series A320 Neo program, the Mitsubishi MRJ that we have a, an historic event here to celebrate today, and also an application for the MC21. If you add all these programs up over the lifetime of the programs, we expect them to collectively generate about $325 billion in revenue over their lifetime. The other big deal that I mentioned for us is uh, the acquisition of Rolls-Royce's share of the very successful IAE V2500 joint venture. Uh, this has a number of, of important benefits for practically. First of all, we're in, upon closing uh, this acquisition in the middle of this year, we'll immediately double our share of that uh, V2500 business that Pratt has enjoyed now for about 25 years. So we'll acquire Rolls-Royce's share. That in turn will give us great earnings growth starting this year and then going forward at least to the end of the decade. There's about 5,000 B2500 engines that have been delivered since the beginning of this program. There's another roughly 2,000 backlog today. We think that before the program uh, winds down at Airbus, the A320 Classic program with the V on it, by the time that winds down in 2018, we'll, we think we'll book another 1,000 orders or so. So all told, we're looking at about 8,000 uh, engines that'll be out there generating a, a very lucrative aftermarket that will continue to grow again through the end of the decade. So this is going to give Pratt and UTC great earnings growth lift through the end of the decade at least. The other thing it does is it allows us to better market the, the new A320 NEO engine. As we go to market now, we have the ability through our two partnerships, our IAE partnership for the B2500 and the new partnership we've established for the NEO engine, we can now go to, go to market together to try to create value for the airlines and operators, leverage the install base that we have for the V, again, to try to gain more share of the uh, A320neo market, much as our competitor does with their CFM56 and the LeapX engine. This really puts us on a level playing field with them in the marketplace and should enable us to be even more successful with the campaigns ahead. And we've had a great deal of success already. And finally, uh, this really extends Pratt Whitney's customer reach. If you look at the customer portfolio that IAE serves with the V2500, again, with the, the acquisition of Rolls-Royce's share and us taking control of that venture, we'll really extend Pratt Whitney's reach to another 100 customers that Pratt doesn't serve today with our existing large commercial engine business. So again, we expect this to close around uh, mid-year. Uh, another element to this, as I mentioned, is the fact that we've agreed to collaborate with Rolls-Royce on a next generation uh, engine for the narrow body platforms once they get launched. Uh, this really illustrates the, the growing success and the growing confidence that uh, airlines and operators have in our next generation product family of engines, the gear turbofan. You can see last year, this is the total backlog now for all four of the engines that are in development today, again, the MRJ, the C-Series, the A320neo, and the MC21. You can see the backlog steadily growing. In fact, you can see the huge jump last year where we added about 1,500 engines to the backlog. Uh, this was a record year for Pratt Whitney, certainly in terms of engine order backlog growth. Uh, you can see that number now sits uh, somewhere north of 2,600 engines, and we're continuing to book orders this year. We had uh, two big wins early this year with Transation and also Go Air, so that, that blue bar continues to go up, and we know we're not done yet. We know that that blue bar will continue to rise as we go through 2012, so 
just another uh, indication of the, of the great confidence that the marketplace has in this new engine family. Okay, the one reason they're, they're, they have such great confidence in the engine that we do as well is we continue to get phenomenal results in the both the ground and the flight test program for this family of engines. You can see the number of hours that we've accumulated here. Now this chart includes the, uh, the roughly 400 hours or so that we put on the, the prototype gear turbofan that we flew on an Airbus A340 a number of years ago. In addition to their prototype engine, we've now accumulated about 2,400 hours on the MRJ and the C-Series engines between the combination of ground testing and flight testing. We've been flight testing the, uh, the C-Series engine now for quite some time now. We've got about 250 hours in the air on our 747 flight uh, flying test bed. We've got about 800 hours on the MRJ engine uh, ground testing and uh, starting uh, this past Monday, just a couple of days ago, we're now increasing that number by adding flight test hours to it uh, with a successful first flight of that engine. So great progress here. Um, we continue to build hours, build confidence. The, the data that we're getting off the flight test and the ground test programs uh, continues to give us great confidence that everything we've been asserting in the marketplace, the 16% the fuel board advantage, the, the 75% 70, lower noise, the, the maintenance cost advantages, the emissions, everything that we've been asserting in the marketplace is being validated in our ground and flight test program. And uh, the other guys are still <coughs> working on the design of their engine on paper. So we feel very good about this. I think it's important to note that uh, by the time the first NEO engine goes into service in the fourth quarter of 2015, we'll already have about a million hours on this family of engines between ground and flight tests. And in fact, by the time the first Leap X goes into service on 737 MAX, uh, we'll have about three million hours on this family of engines between the test program and the, and the hours we'll be accumulating uh, in service on the MRJ C-Series and NEO engines. So, Great progress here. Let me shift to the military engine business, and the, the big news there is clearly the Joint Strike Fighter Program, as I mentioned. Uh, we prevailed in Congress last year in the elimination of funding for the unnecessary extra engine. We're now the sole source engine for the Joint Strike Fighter Program. We continue to click off milestones here. These engines, both the Stovall and the CTOL, the conventional and the vertical takeoff engine, are through development into production. We've delivered about 50 production engines so far. Uh, we'll deliver about 50 production engines this year, and that program will continue to ramp up. The other um, element that we're really proud of in our executions program is on the cost side. Uh, we, it was cleared uh, in some conversations with our DOD customer early in 2009. They weren't happy with our cost performance at the time. We went to work and put together a very rigorous and detailed cost reduction program. And since that time in 2009, we've executed perfectly in the cost reduction program. And we're giving the customer what they want, an engine that's performing extraordinarily well at their cost target. So we're very proud of our performance on the cost side as well. And the engine continues to perform very well in the flight test program. Uh, the JPO and Lockheed Martin continue to run ahead of the flight test program in terms of hours accumulated, the flights accumulated. The engine supporting that with a better than 98% uh, dispatch reliability uh, number for the flight test program, which is a pretty extraordinary number given where we are in, uh, in early on in the program. So great success here. Uh, they also had this photograph here shows the carrier um, sea trials that they did on the Stovall aircraft. Two aircraft in, uh, in 10 or 11 days accomplished, I think it was 71 vertical takeoff and landings of extraordinary success, uh, no big issues, and that was just one of the accomplishments that resulted in Secretary of Defense taking the Stolwell aircraft, aircraft off of uh, probation late last year. And this program continues to move forward and was going to be, as you can see here, a big growth engine for Pratt Whitney, again, for years and decades to come. This is the programmer record. The blue bars here represent the number of engine deliveries, and you can see that Come about the middle part of the decade, we're going to start to see a significant ramp up in production deliveries for the Joint Strike Fighter program. Certainly, the, with DOD budget pressures, you know this uh, this ramp may get pushed slightly to the right or or drop a little bit. But nevertheless, this is going to be a huge growth engine for Pratt for years and for decades to come, and uh, we're really ramping up production right now. 
Let me shift to our small engine business based in uh, Montreal, Canada. Uh, again, number one in the world in small commercial engines. Uh, they had explosive growth. If you went and looked at the, the numbers that you see here, this is engine deliveries for Pratt Canada. If we were to look at these numbers from 2003 to 2008, they increased the, their engine deliveries fourfold. They went from about 1,000 engines in 03 to 4,000 engines in 2008, you can see there. But with the, uh, the economic crisis and the impact that that had on business jet deliveries, and a, a little bit less than half of our engine deliveries go to business jets, uh, we suffered along with the, the reduction in business jets and, again, the financial crisis. So we've, we've come down a bit since that peak of 2008 a little bit more than 30% drop in engine deliveries over the, over the last three years. Good news is we're starting to see market recovery. Used inventories are coming down, <coughs> business jet utilization is, is going back up, and the other sectors that we serve, the helicopter market is a big part of our business, agriculture, utility aircraft, and also regional turboprops. We're seeing recovery in all of those segments as well. If you combine that with Pratt Whitney Cannon's continued track record of developing certified new engines, and you can see the number there, 72, engine, 72 new engines certified since 94, and that trend continues year over year with new airplane delivery, new engine certification programs. That combination of mar market recovery, we think, through the end of the decade, as well as a continuous stream of new product introductions, uh, this business will also be a growth engine for Pratt for years to come here as we head through the decade. Just a little bit more about uh, some of the new programs in the pipeline here. Uh, we continue to develop our uh, variant, various variants of the PW300 family of engines uh, targeted at mid-sized business jets, and we have uh, certification programs that are in progress now on the uh, Lear 85 and the SO 2000S assessment citation latitude. So again, we continue to certify derivatives of the, the 300 family of engines uh, for Pratt Canada. We're also bringing forward, as I mentioned, leveraging the benefits we have from the core that's used for the MRJ and also slightly larger core in the C-Series. We're developing uh, a commercial, uh, excuse me, a business jet, large business jet variant of that engine that we continue to bring forward, uh, targeted at the large business jet segment there, a segment that we have relatively small share of today, but we are optimistic we'll have opportunities to grow that going forward with this great new PW800 family of engines. We also continue to serve the helicopter market and continue to certify new engines there. We just recently certified another variant of the venerable PT6 engine for the Eurocopter 175. Uh, we were also certified recently uh, the 200 family or the 210 engine for the Sikorsky S7060, making progress on the Augusta Westland AW169, and you may have read that we were also recently selected for the Eurocopter X4 program. So a very um, important part of the business for Pratt Canada is the helicopter segment. And then we're, um, we're certainly number one in the world in the region tur regional turboprop uh, segment with our PW100 family of engines, and we continue to look to the future there to develop the next generation of uh, regional turboprops. So a very exciting business with a great history and an even better growth story in front of it. And then PW Power Systems, I mentioned that was uh, one of the smaller segments of, of Pratt Whitney, but the industrial gas turbine business has had a, a very nice growth path over the last five years and has now more than 2,000 industrial gas turbines installed around the world that range from 25 to 120 megawatt power levels. They also have an organic rank and cycle business uh, that's anchored by a business in, in Europe called Turboden that uh, develops and, and provides systems that can generate electrical power from various forms of heat, either solar, biomass, industrial waste heat, or other sources of heat, and continue to expand their market share. They recently um, installed the new operations, or in the process of installing new operations in the UK for organic rank and cycle systems uh, to provide electricity, uh, one at Heathrow, and also one for British Sky Broadcasting. So, nice growth story there at Pratt power systems as well. The aftermarket is, is a big part of our business. You can see well more than, than half of Pratt Whitney's total, close to $13 billion in revenue, and we're seeing double-digit growth in all three of our aerospace engine businesses here, 
The military engine business will be up close to, to double digits. Pratt Canada should have double digit growth in their spares business and aftermarket business. And our large commercial engine business, if you include uh, the IE acquisition, that again we expect to close sometime around mid year, uh, that will be double digit as well. So this continues to give our business nice lift. So if you add all this up, um, it's really a, a very impressive growth story. If we take a look and project the revenues out through the end of the decade, Pratt Whitney is going to double from about a $12 million business at the beginning of this decade to about $24 billion by the end. And this is not uh, some aspirational goal that I've been given by our chairman, Louis Chenever. This is math. If we take a look at the programs that we've won, and forecast out the airplane deliveries associated with those programs and throw in some aftermarket. This is what it looks like for Pratt. I mean, it's a very impressive growth story. And we've got, you know, a few challenges we're going to have to navigate through here in the near term. We've got some of our legacy military programs, you know, that are starting to come down in, in the near term, F-100 engines and F-117s and F-119s. And we've got a few other things we'll have to navigate through. But long term, we've really positioned this business very well for long-term growth. The engines that I've talked about here this morning, we're going to hear more about from the other executives in Pratt Whitney, that the engines that are in the pipeline today that we're developing today are going to be defining Pratt Whitney for the next 20 to 30 years. And this is what it's going to result in, the kind of growth story that you can see here. So with that, I'd like to um, ask uh, Hirofumi Takahashi to join me up here on the stage. Um, we have a very important guest here with us today, the president of the uh, Mitsubishi Aircraft North American operation here to celebrate the uh, historic event, as you know, for folks that joined us at dinner last evening at the Air Museum. Uh, Pratt Whitney's had a pretty rich history and the products and the engines we've developed have really made aviation history, really have defined the industry that we work, we work in, starting with a, our very first engine, uh, the WASP in 1925, but continuing on with that, uh, you saw next to the tables last, uh, last evening, the uh, F-100 Super Sabre that uh, had our engine in it, the first fighter engine to be supersonic, and the first turbojet engine, and the, uh, the first commercial successful uh, Boeing 707 with the Pratt Whitney engine. The first high bypass uh, engine to go into commercial service was a Pratt Whitney engine, uh, the JT90 and the Boeing 747. And we continue to make history. And the latest uh, big milestone that we're here to celebrate and show you a little bit more about is the first flight uh, of the MRJ engine on our Pratt Whitney 747 flying test beds that occurred just this past Monday. You'll get to see that up close this morning and then see it fly uh, later today. Can I ask um, Hirofumi Taka Takahashi to please join me up here on the stage for this important night. Congratulations. Thank you for introducing me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm uh, Hirofumi Takahashi, uh, president of uh, Mitsubishi Aircraft Corporation America Inc. And it's my pleasure to attend uh, this event today. And uh, I would like to thank Pratt and Huitengi for this opportunity. Uh, back in 2007, <laughs> we selected the uh, GTF engine for MRJ as a launching customer. And as David said, uh, Mitsubishi has a long and great relationship uh, with uh, Pratt and Huitengi. And uh, we have uh, confidence in M uh, GTF engine for as a uh, head of MRJ to realize the value and uh, advantage we promised to the customer. It is uh, so exciting for us to see actual MRJ GTF engine flying, and uh, we are very pleased to announce the uh, start of. MRJ engine flight test today. May, as you may know, uh, we have announced the latest schedule update for, for MRJ program just last week. 
this uh, program MRJ, uh, this program is uh, challenging for us because wha uh, what we are developing is a truly innovative and game-changing aircraft. The start of uh, fly engine flight test makes a great uh, achievement of major milestone of our MRJ program. And we, Mitsubishi Aircraft, uh, we promise to keep updated schedule to deliver MRJ to the customer. And also, we promise to realize MRJ as a next generation aircraft together with uh, Black and Huitemi. Thank you. And again, uh, we would like thanks for uh, David and all Black people to inviting us today. Thank you so much. Video? Yeah. All right, we have a little bit of a video to show you of the, uh, the uh, latest historic event at, uh, for Pratt Whitney, uh, the, uh, the MRJ engine. Maker Pratt & Whitney made aviation history today with the successful test flight of a new engine industry analysts are calling an evolution in engine technology. Our new pure power engine family, it's technology that Pratt & Whitney has been working on for quite some time and we've managed to perfect it. So finally our customers get to reap the benefits with reduced fuel burn and lower operating costs. The aircraft just came back from its first flight test uh, and it's, uh, it was remarkable and it can now pass to the next step of a flight test. The test flight followed days of intense preparation and ground tests. The PW1200G engine flew on a uniquely designed stub wing attached to Pratt & Whitney's flying test bed at the company's Mirabel Aerospace Center in Canada. The stub wing is located on the FTB4 just after the uh, co-pilot seat to allow for uh, proper airflow around the Boeing nose for aerodynamic purposes. It was a very innovative fix because the engine was in evolution. Our wing and vertical pylon were also evolving at the same time and there was a lot of engineering requirements in regards for the stress and for also the controllability because we did not want the wing to actually create lift which would give a different aircraft characteristics. The engine is part of the Pure Power family of engines featuring the award-winning gear turbofan. One of the most unique advantages of the gear turbofan is it allows the, the uh, fan to run at a much slower speed, which allows for a much quieter engine. Uh, we're making leaps and bounds and fuel burn. Um, acoustically, we're significantly quieter than the competitors, and we also have a significant reduction in emissions. Pratt & Whitney has conducted nearly 800 hours of full engine testing for the PW1200G engine. Company spokespersons say there have been over 2,200 hours and 6,000 cycles of full engine testing. It allows us to confirm the operability of the engine, the performance of the engine, and the fuel efficiency of the engine. We're making history every day. We're proving that our technology works, and it works very well. This is the ultimate for a test engineer, is to ground test it and then eventually get to, to flight test and see the final product on the wing. This program marks the second successful test of engines in the Pure Power family in under 10 months. The PW1200G program will run a total of eight test engines with certification scheduled for 2013.